So hello. You know that I, I started studying NLP some time ago from the academia point of view. And I have to say that I'm a quite bad student. Usually I am in love with the, with the theory, but once I have to go to lectures and this, I drop out. So I said, with the, the few things that I learned, I would like to build something that has a real impact in, in my life, at least. And so I want to share with you the story of how I am using a chatbot to learn a new language, a new language that is Czech. So this story takes place in, in Czech Republic. And you know what the Czechs, they, they tell you when you express the intent that you want to learn Czech? Any idea? Yeah, they say don't try. <laughs> so, so I say, okay, okay. And so let's, I, I lower my, my expectations and I say, at least I want to learn something to, to survive. So I try traditional um, classroom with teacher, you know, reading the books and this and that the mobile applications and these clubs to, that we, you can go somewhere in the city and exchange with some other people. But this one doesn't work for me. I am naturally introvert person, so I panic when I know someone is waiting for me to answer. So I say, okay, here we have a problem. I, I have, I, I, I suffer of anxiety with, I know someone and when you know that both of you can speak English, you just switch to English and forget about Czech. And the mobile applications and the classroom, I came to this, to this uh, conclusion. I said, usually when you go to classroom, everything happens in one direction. It's like you, you are reading a book, you are, you are saying how to order a beer, how to say your name, all these things, but more or less they will never prepare you in how to process the information back. So it happened to me in the, in the typical classroom that they were saying, so whenever you go to a restaurant, you just say, uh, I would like a beer. But if the, the waiter waitress will ask me 12 or 11, uh, small or big, I was blue screen. So I don't know. So if you want to, then I had to switch to English. So if you want to put it in, in, in machine learning terms, my, my um, insight is that when you learn in typical, at least traditional for me, traditional ways a language, it's like your machine learning model is getting overfit. You just learn how to say, you, you learn from a very limited training data, and you are only good at this training data. And when you go to the test data real life, in this case, for example, uh, uh, in a restaurant, you get hit, and, and very hard. So then you get knockout by, by, by this reality. So I say, okay, I, I, this is kind of a problem that I want to solve. How can I do this? If you sum up all the things I've been describing, I say, okay, I want to, solve a different problem. So what are the problems that I want to solve? And this here, it becomes a little bit personal from my side because I say, okay, I am hitting 30 plus years old. So this is the traditional U-turn of happiness where you start getting your crisis. And I say, I, want, I, I have three goals. I want to learn Czech to survive because Czechs, they told me, don't try. So I say, at least to survive. I want to build more technical skills. That's a second problem, if you will and I want to have fun. So, so this is like this triangle of misery that you can only choose two. I say, no, no, no. I think that if, if I'm able to draw a line that connects these dots, there is, there, there, there is fun and there is, uh, I will be somehow optimizing this function in love just the direction that I want to go. So I start thinking in how we learn. So I say, how we learn, for example, check. So watching TED Talks, reading papers of psychology of how the kids acquire a language, there are lots of theory. I didn't want to go, I, I just tried to take what I, what I found was easy to implement. And there is one, one, one rule that it says that you learn when the, the content is relevant to your context. So kids, they, they learn how to say dad, mom, and other things to survive because it's relevant for them in that context. What, what do you think is relevant for me in Cherry Public? It's just, you will see. And then, you, you see, when, you, when you learn the relevant context, you can see that it has an immediate impact. So if I learn to say something now, it takes me two hours, and then I go to the next path in the, in the next corner, and I can use what I learned, then I start building the, this muscle in my mind that I can achieve a goal. So in other words, I needed a set of vocabulary that was relevant to my, to my reality. It had to be like with immediate impact, if you, if you jump to, to typical mobile applications or traditional classroom, they teach you words or vocabulary when your luggage gets lost in the airport. 
this is not relevant for me, so I can learn this and I will forget it tomorrow. And achieve a goal, that is, for example, order beer. So just to, to, to not break what, what Alan was trying to do, who knows how to say beer in Czech? Okay, so this guy will have my, I will donate my socks. That will be the, the, <laughs> the price. So I was trying to connect the dots and I say, okay, if you want to put it in other words, achieve a goal is like when you say a bot is goal oriented, vocabulary is a data set, corpus, back of words, and relevant context is a closed domain in which a, in which a chatbot is built. So my first intent was I want to, to start building this. So this is the, the making, and I like this picture because every time, and I was sharing this with some customers, when you think that you are uh, approaching um, a solution, you, are, you, you can see, or when you think that you know the solution, you are seeing the, the light of the end of the tunnel, and usually this is more problems. But better and new problems, and it's problems that you want to solve. That's why I put it here like this, I want to have fun. So how was my first, um, my first intent? I say, okay, let's just Google and let's see. I don't want to, to reinvent the wheel. I found the Spacey library. And then I started reading, okay, the typical NLP pipeline, I will do this or not. But I said, no, this doesn't make any sense because not even, my native language is Spanish. And not even in Spanish, uh, if I go back to elementary school, I will fail an exam or quiz or, or doing the part of a speech tagging. I, I completely forgot this. So I said, now I'm pretending to do this in Czech. This, this doesn't make any sense. This, this is a lost battle. And then I saw that there was not at the moment a model, pre-trained model in a space here. And, and back in those days, I'm talking last year, there was not this BERT or other things that you could have some pre-trained word vectors. There, there was nothing, but at, or at least I didn't find. So I said, let's try to build my own word to back and let's try to use some uh, neural network, recurrent neural network. But the farthest I could get is to rank intents. And I wasn't even approaching the problem of how can I keep that a dialogue, which, which for me was like, no, this is too much. So I started Googling, and this is how the, the first uh, side love with, with Rasa, because this is more or less the steps I had to, to follow to get to Rasa. And then I found this, because this is the most important. In the very beginning, someone was saying the training data. All of this is nice in the theory, but you need, you need training, training data. How I made my life easier. I, I am very grateful with Charles University. This is the university that I was attending, the traditional uh, classroom. So they, they not only, they, they show me that I was not a proper fit for a, for a traditional way of teaching language, but I found out that someone from that university made a bachelor thesis with a data set of all the dialogues relevant to a restaurant. So I, had, I got my training data for, from here, and besides, it was labeled in English. So I could judge and I could say, okay, so part of the problem is solved. I have a set of dialogues here that I can use to train the model. But I didn't stop there. I wanted to have more fun. So I, the, the same books that I bought for the traditional way of learning Czech, I, I, I used them to, I did data wrongling and data processing just to, to, to at some point have a consolidated data set that I was using a bunch of Python create a JSON file that I was going to feed into the RASA NLU using the supervised embeddings um, pipeline. And this was one of the early, early uh, tests. Here I'm saying I would like to order fried cheese. And it was detecting correctly that it was fried cheese and, that they or, and which was the, the intent. So I, at some point I got sick and I had to go to the doctor, and again, no English. And then at that point I say, okay, and now my model is overfit in that I'm, I only know how to ask for food, but I found out there is a completely different vocabulary if you want to see a doctor, if your internet is down and you want to complain, or if you want to flirt, very important, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to flirt. So I say, this is a, 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 an opportunity that I would like to, for example, I, a, a friend of mine, front developer, build this, UI for me. They say, what if this is like a normal school in which you have a kind of a receptionist? And I'm gonna approach the bot using English, but like in the Matrix, in the movie, that they say, hey Neo, which program do you want? And the guy says, I would like a, a fly a helicopter or hack in the computer. I have these suggested, uh, suggested programs here that is called a doctor, I would like to complain, and food program. So what I do from there is that this also I'm bringing from bringing from Rasa, 
from the payload. When you get you 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 make a request to the core, you get a JSON back. I'm just parsing this JSON in the UI to suggest something. And if you don't want to do it like this, we also made a manual uh, context way, a manual way in which you can add context. So now you can imagine what is my roadmap. My roadmap will be like add more context. Uh, in the way that uh, I, I keep finding relevant vocabulary that I should learn in order to survive in, in Cherry Republic. So one quick example, surviving in Cherry Republic relies a lot in being able to order a beer. So this is an example of one interaction that I keep having and also it will be very frustrating if I get stuck in the form, in the policy of Raza, if I don't know how to say something, so I'm bringing some suggestions that what you could say. Some of them are wrong, so the chatbot doesn't move in the next, uh, doesn't predict any action in the dialogue, and I will have to restart, and this is more or less what I try to do, that what will happen if I go to a restaurant, for example, and I don't know how to express myself with this person. So more or less what I want to say with the boxing analogies is that I created a chatbot that serves as a sparring partner. You saw in the beginning I was knocked out. Now at least I am able to dodge some punches. Not every time, but, 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 but it's something like compared with the, from the beginning. And, um, okay, short of time. I want to share with you that this use case that started as a bedroom, bedroom project has had some unintended consequences and impact in other areas of, of my, my work. So j before jumping to that, I just wanted to show you that this is more or less the high level architecture of the, of the solution where you can see I have a context selector that is based manually if you want or intent driven. And I, I decided to use a Cassandra database to store the, by clusters the relevant vocabulary per context in this, in this uh, scenario. So beyond my use case, I wanted to share even more personal stories here. I was in, a, in an interview for a job and they told me, yeah, you need to, you, you, you speak nicely, but we would like to see some uh, test of coding or these things. And I happened to have this computer there, so I just showed the guy, look, you are expat as well? Yes, I'm from France. We both live in Terpolic. So let me show you. And now the guy is interested in using my product. So he saw and he didn't have to go through the coding interview. And in this, now in this new reality, we, we found another problem. This, this is more, the, the, more of the same in a different context. What was the problem? You know that in these big companies, they have account payables. There are lots of invoices to be processed. A um, big part of the back office of, of, the, of these people that they are taking the invoices and put, the, put them in an ERP to be processed, they don't speak English. So what we did, we say, and also the, the license for this cloud ERP is per name user and it's expensive. And we, they, they say we don't want to buy 200 name users for the 200 people in the back office that they don't speak English so they can process the invoices. So what we did, oh, I have a chatbot that you can train in, in check and we can train the intents to process an invoice. So what was the problem? This, this, this problem was more like there is business case, there is a complaint event, How, what can we do? Let's use a chatbot, we only buy one license or that license is for the chatbot and through the chatbot we are somehow some sort of a proxy that is going to speak with the people, and the people can use it to trigger the process in an RPA. So uh, th this is also very, very interesting for, for me at the moment, because we are heavily using RPA, this robot process automation, and I like to see that Rasa is like the smart bot, the white collar, and RPA is the blue collar guy. He's not thinking, he's not learning, he's just doing, the, he's completely rule-based for these business process that are supposed to be uh, strict in the rules. You don't have too many exceptions processing a, an invoice. So this is one use case. We use check in the front for the RPA. And the second is similar, but more of the learning curve. They were saying a staffing company. They say we, we need sometimes to find 200 uh, people for next week that they have Java skills, Python skills, or whatever skill. And it takes a lot of time, the learning curve, to teach the people how to use this legacy system that works with keywords. It's a, a keyword search. What can we do? In, instead of teaching them how to use this tool, 
The tool is in English. When you, if it's web-based, no, no, it's not web-based. It's in, it, but it's not. In, it's in English, and you cannot do right-click, translate to English. So another problem. So again, the checkboard to the rescue. So what can we do instead of? But in this case, we are not using the core. We are just using the NLU, and we are and we train the model to take um, natural queries like, "Hey, bot, I would like to find candidates for next week that they know Python." And then all the logic behind knows that if we are at 24th of September, what is next week, and how to query different databases, again, Cassandra, that are filtered by availability, skills, location, and all these things. So all of this that I want to share with you is because I truly believe that the, the, the developers are kind of the decision makers of tomorrow. In this type of, of solutions that they you, every time, if you read this, it says there is a big disclaimer. They say state of the art. So now we are the ones that are using these state of the art tools. We are learning, finding use cases for this. And tomorrow, the developers using these are going to be the decision makers of which technology sh should we adopt. So I will invite you to see beyond my use case and to see how this approach of let's find a problem, let's try to fix it. In my case, I want to learn to build skills and have fun, can derive in many other use cases that I was not thinking when we started in my, in my company building this. And also, maybe because I am millennial, I try to find purpose and meaning everything. There is one thing that I don't see a chatbot interacting with an RPA tool. I see a chatbot that is helping you to find candidates faster. And this can make the difference between someone having a paycheck today or two, two, or two weeks later. And I don't see a, um, a chatbot only for, for learning uh, a language. I see a chatbot that is, being, is making more inclusive because in Europe, there are so many countries, so different languages, and, even, and, and the, the, the communication style is different. And when you tell the, the, the medium to big companies that, sorry, there is no train model in this vendor A or this vendor B, you have to wait. With these tools, what we are finding is that you don't need to wait for the big vendors. You, have, you already know your business, you have your own data, so let's clean this data and let's create a chatbot for your use case in your language, and you can give the personality of the bot tailored to, to how you make business or how you interact with people in your culture. Hmm.